In the last lecture, we have already discussed the formation of aorticopulmonary septum. And in that lecture, we had discussed that the aorticopulmonary septum, it arises from the conotruncal ridges. So this is the conal ridges. These two are the right and left conal ridges. And here are the truncal ridges. Of course, they will unite together. And if we just isolate this part only, here you can see that this is the conal, conal ridges which are fused together and these are the truncal ridges. Uh, further, they will meet together. They will come towards each other to form the spiral septum. So that's how the spiral aorticopulmonary septum is formed. Of course, in this lecture, I will not go into the details of formation of aorticopulmonary septum as well as the interventricular septum. We have already discussed this topic in a great detail. If you want to learn more about it, please watch the previous lecture or if you are watching it on YouTube, please see the link in description to buy the complete course on embryology of cardiovascular system. So in today's lecture, we will talk about the tetralogy of Fallet. Now here you can see that the bulbous cordis as well as the truncus arteriosus with the formation of the spiral aorticopulmonary septum, this truncus arteriosus as well as bulbous cordis has been divided into two parts. Now uh, this part here in which I have inserted this probe, this part will be forming the aorta. This part will form the ascending aorta and this part in which there is no probe, this part is going to form the proximal most part of pulmonary trunk. Now if I put all the other things in the perspective, here you can see that this red one is the left ventricle and here you can see this probe going into the left ventricle and from left ventricle here you can see that this part of truncus arteriosus in which the probe is inserted, this part is going to form the aorta and this part which is arising from the right ventricle, it it is going to form the pulmonary trunk. And of course, this aorticopulmonary septum will also proliferate along with the AV cushions to form the membranous part of interventricular septum like this. So here it is forming the membranous part of interventricular septum. Now that was the normal development. What happens that sometimes the development is not normal. The precise details of molecular mechanism is not known and that is of course beyond the scope of this lecture. But some people believe that there is the abnormality in migration of neural crest cells. As we have discussed previously that neural crest cells have their role in the formation of aorticopulmonary septum. And if there is abnormal migration of neural crest cells into this area, this leads to abnormal development of aorticopulmonary septum. And abnormal development of aorticopulmonary septum in this case is such that this septum is tilted anteriorly. It is tilted anteriorly like this. So here you can see that two things actually happened as a result of tilting of this aorticopulmonary septum anteriorly. Here you can see that aorta, uh, actually it was the septum, it was dividing the truncus arteriosus into almost equal parts, right? But now this is asymmetric division. Now the division is asymmetric and as a result, the aorta has got a more share from this truncus arteriosus and this pulmonary trunk, it has got a very little share. You see, this is just like a toxic relationship. So now they are having this toxic relationship in which the aorta is getting more of this uh, share and the pulmonary trunk, it is getting very little. So much so that here you can see that pulmonary trunk is very narrow. 
it is stenosed so if we put the pulmonary trunk here you will see uh, i will put it in a minute and you will see that pulmonary trunk will be very narrow and narrow pulmonary trunk is called stenosed it is stenosed pulmonary trunk so what we call that there is pulmonary stenosis so one thing is pulmonary stenosis the second thing is as a result of anterior tilting or anterior shifting of this aorticopulmonary septum uh, this membranous part of uh, this interventricular septa which was being formed by this aorticopulmonary septum it will also be shifted and as a result there will be this gap between the two ventricles this is the formation of ventricular septal defect and the ventricular septal defect in this condition will be mainly in the membranous part of interventricular septum because this membranous part of interventricular septum is mainly contributed by the aorticopulmonary septum of course there is also contribution from the septum intermedium or uh, this av cushions but major contribution is by the aorticopulmonary septum and of course that contribution will be faulty that leads to formation of this um, interventricular septal defect so two things we have noticed one is the pulmonary stenosis second is the ventricular septal defect and another thing is also there you can see aorta is much bigger and here you can see that this part uh, let me exactly show you here so this part this part is going to form the aorta and now you can see that this part of aorta it is actually opening just above the ventricular septal defect you see it is opening just above the ventricular septal defect let me show you exactly so here is that ventricular somewhat here is that ventricular septal defect and this primordial aorta is opening above the ventricular septal defect this condition is called overriding of aorta and as a result of overriding of aorta now the aorta will be receiving the blood from both of the ventricles let's see it more clearly in this in this diagram in this 3d model so here is we are right now in the right ventricle this one is the right ventricle this one is the right ventricle here you can see that this is the septal defect and because aorta is overriding the ventricular septal defect here it is receiving the blood from right ventricle here we are going from the right ventricle into aorta and now if we zoom out and here if we go into left ventricle here also from the left ventricle as well the aorta is opening into left ventricle as well so this aorta will be receiving the blood from both of the ventricles right ventricles as well as left ventricles and that is a problem why is that a problem because generally the aorta should be receiving the blood from the left ventricle only and there is no intermixing of ventricular blood there is no mixing of blood between right and left ventricles but now the aorta will be receiving the oxygenated blood from left ventricle as well as deoxygenated blood from right ventricle so there will be the mixing of blood and now the blood that will be delivered to whole of the body through the aorta it will be mixed blood so the blood that will be delivered to whole of the body will be less oxygenated than normal it means that body might become cyanosed so cyanosis is the problem that will be seen in the tetralogy of Fele and along with that because the right ventricle there is the septal defect between these two ventricles the right ventricle will have to pump more blood so there will be much more burden on right ventricle which leads to right ventricular hypertrophy right ventricle will overwork and this will lead to right ventricular hypertrophy and as a result of right ventricular hypertrophy now you see what is the shape of the heart now the heart it is beginning to look like boot so what they say is that the heart 
looks like a boot and they call it boot shaped heart. So boot shaped appearance of heart is a typical of teratology of LA. Teratology? Well, no, it's not teratology. I deliberately use the wrong word so that I remind you that this is not teratology. It is, well, it is technically teratology because teratology is the study of congenital anomalies. But the name of this condition is not teratology of LA. It is called tetralogy of LA. Why it is called Tetralogy, tetralogy means four, tetrad. It comes from the word tetrad, so four. Actually, four things are happening here. One thing is pulmonary stenosis, narrowing of narrowing of pulmonary trunk, so pulmonary stenosis. Then there is ventricular septal defect, VSD. Then there is this overriding of aorta, so overriding of aorta, OA. This is the third thing and fourth thing which is actually due to all these things which is secondary to all these things and this is the hypertrophy of right ventricle hypertrophy of right ventricle so uh, these four things constitutes the syndrome called tetralogy of Fele. Why it is called Fele? It is in the name of a French physician who first described these four things together. So tetralogy of Fele consists of pulmonary stenosis and we have already discussed how it happens. This is due to abnormal formation of urticopulmonary septum. Then there is ventricular septal defect and there is overriding of aorta such that the aorta opens just above the ventricular septal defect and it is receiving the blood from both of the ventricles and then there is secondary hypertrophy of right ventricle so pvos you can remember it through the acronym pvos so pvos consists of these four things and this constitutes the tetralogy of fele Thank you so much for watching this video.